filling in your student grant form. Oh, how much do I get? Well, all in all, it looks as if you get over 2,000 a year. Well, that's not bad for a start, I suppose. Not bad for a start? That's all you're getting. I can't live on that. Matthew, do you know how much a peasant has to live on in Costa Rica? But he's not going to the poly, is he? <laughs> and the residential fees are over 30 pounds a week. That means I'll probably have five pounds left for cigarettes, drink, clothes and travel. I notice you didn't mention soap or toothpaste. Can't you make a contribution? I am making a contribution. That's why I'm filling this form in. I didn't know that. I thought the government paid. Not in every case. Anyone in a more affluent position has to make a contribution. Are we affluent? Well, my salary is above average. Does that mean we're middle class? I suppose so. I hope no one finds out I'll never live it down. <laughs> Don't worry, no one's going to take you for middle class. You've got a working class face. Working class? I haven't got a job. No, but if you had a job, you've got the face to go with it. <laughs> We're affluent. Why don't you do what David Worth's father's done? What's that? He's made him an allowance of 2,000 a year to get him through college. You're forgetting Black Monday. Black Monday? The stock market crash. I thought it was Tuesday. It was pretty black on Wednesday as well. <laughs> it was a meltdown, Matthew. I lost a third of my capital. Perhaps you don't remember. No, I remember. That's when you turned the eating down and cancelled my new musical express. <laughs> well, we had to economise. I used to be a bull. Now I'm a bear. <laughs> well, are you put him down now. This is confidential. Well, it can't be confidential from me. Section D is Section D contains my personal details. Is that your salary? Oh yes. It's not much, is it? Yeah, well, that's only the basic. <laughs> that doesn't take account of considerable fringe benefits. David Worth's father gets twice as much as that. Does he? Then perhaps you should go and live with him. You don't realise what a struggle this is going to be. Can't you plead poverty? Certainly not. And in my position, can't plead poverty. Besides, this salary could be substantially increased by the end of the year. Why? Promotion. Jim Osborne collapsed at the weekend. They found him stretched out among his runner beans. <laughs> Speechless. They say it's overwork. And you think you might get his job? Well, I'm the next in line. Who else is there? There's Fox. Fox. Who told you about Fox? You did! Oh. <laughs> well, yes, there's Fox. He's always creeping around fielding, but it won't do him any good. I'm the front runner, Matthew. That job is mine. Mm. Perhaps it'd be better if you didn't get the job. Oh. I don't want to find you stretched out amongst the runner beans. <laughs> I need that job, Matthew. You don't know how much it costs to support you, the food, the clothes, the way you squeeze the toothpaste. I do appreciate it, Dad. And you won't be sorry. You're investing in my future and I'll pay you back someday. Yes, well, I can't wait that long. I need something on account. That means you're going to have to get a temporary job during the summer. How temporary? Till they find you out. <laughs> Ted? Henry? What's it doing? Oh, peeing down. <laughs> you're in early. Oh, there's lots to do. Careful, Henry. Don't you go in the same way as poor Osborne. You heard any more? But well, all he was doing was raking up a few leaves and bingo. Out like a light. Hasn't spoken since. Overwork. There's a moral in that. Well, nobody's indispensable, Ted. Well, the work goes on, Henry. Right. Of course, this means his job will be coming up. Yes, I suppose they'll advertise. Oh, no, they'll give it to you. You deserve it. After all, you've been doing all the work. Now, even if they do go through channels, it'll only be a formality. Well, I'm not so sure. It's a question of qualifications. Oh. Haven't you got any, Henry? Only first aid and a medal in ballroom dancing. I don't think that would get me anywhere. Never mind, you've got experience, old son. Right. Will you put in for it, Ted? Me? I haven't even thought of it. <laughs> now, it's your job, Henry. Right. Fox, you've got to worry about. Fox? Fox for name and fox for nature. He's late. Oh, no, he's late. He's been waiting for fielding. Ah, they're coming in together. I thought so. He's uh, sheltering fielding under his umbrella. What? <laughs> You've got to hand it to him, Henry. He saw it was raining and hung about just in case F.G. forgot his brolly. They're whispering. Yes. You can do a lot of whispering under an umbrella, Henry. Yes. Good morning, gentlemen. Post. Oh. 
Who was that? What? Another well, temporary, I suppose. <laughs> a scrape in the battle there, Henry. Excuse me, uh, Fielding's office. Figures. Hello, Dad. Don't call me that. Yeah. What are you doing here? Fielding's having trouble with his blind. I said I'd take a look at it. I didn't mean in this office. I meant in this building. I've got a job for the summer. Oh, no. I thought you'd be pleased. You told me to get a job. But not here. I've got enough to worry about. I can't be responsible for you as well. Don't worry. I didn't say we were related. Oh, that's something, I suppose. Mind you, they'll probably spot the likeness. What likeness? <laughs> Isn't any likeness? And I think I should mention that FG doesn't like people wandering around his office without a good reason. And you better get out. I'm fixing the blind. <laughs> you know you're an authority on blinds? I'm not, but I'm making myself useful. That's what you've always told me to do. You see, there's two of us down in filing and stationery, and there's not really enough work. Now, if they decide to let one of us go, they may just keep the man who knows something about blinds. <laughs> Good thinking, eh, Dad? Well, if there's not enough work, why don't you go? I'm sure you'd be happier stacking trolleys down at Tesco's. Oh, I could be useful to you, Dad. I could keep my ear to the ground about the job. Matthew, there may not even be a job. You haven't heard, then? What? About Osborne? Hypertension, angina, and a pronounced cardiac murmur. You won't be coming back. Well, not to that job, no. What they're thinking of doing is to merge internal audit with special projects and bringing Osborne over Mason and Webb in a sort of sinecure position. <laughs> How do you know all this? You've only been here five minutes. Heard it in the gents. I don't care where you heard it. You can't go around saying things like that. Am I interrupting something? Ah, good morning, sir. I'm fixing the blind. Well, get on with it, then. Yes, Henry? I uh, just uh, popped in to see how Osborne was, F.G. <clears throat> Grave news, I'm afraid. Hypertension, angina, and a pronounced cardiac murmur. <laughs> <laughs> he won't be returning to us in his present capacity, I'm afraid. Now, what we're thinking of doing, and I don't want this to go any further, is to merge internal audit with special projects and to bring in Osborne over Mason and Webb in a sort of... Sinecure <laughs> position. Sinecure position, yes, yes. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, one other thing, Henry. Osborne's job... Yes? ...will be advertised. Oh. Uh, this isn't a criticism of you, Henry, but uh, we must be seen to be even-handed. We can't afford the slightest hint of favouritism. Uh, but, but as the front-runner, you'll be expected to, to apply for the job. No, oh, of course. Doug Dale's coming down from the head office to conduct the interview. Mm, Doug Dale? Mm. Mm, don't think I know him. Mm. What's he like? He's a bastard, then. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth do you think you're doing? Sorry, sir. Faulty blind. I'll have to get on to maintenance. <laughs> Where do they find these people, Henry? <laughs> uh, for a drink, Dad? No, I'm filling in my application. Get it out of the way. Mind you, it's only a formality. Is it? <laughs> you know something. All I know is you can't get a bet on it. Well, that's because it's a formality. I'm the front runner, Matthew. Yes. Well, I'm the only one that can do the job. It's not what you know, it's who you know at International. How oh, do you know what it's like at International? You've only been here a week. You'll be telling me next that I'm not the favourite. You're not. <laughs> who is? Fox. Fox? The umbrella man. You mean I come after Fox? No, you come after Walker. <laughs> Ted? But he said he wasn't putting in for it. He wouldn't do this to me. He's done it. I can't believe it. And say Walker's had more strings pulled for him than Pinocchio. <laughs> well, I'm not worried. He and Fielding aren't that close. They go to the same church. Do they? They pray together. You can't get any closer than that. <laughs> well, that puts Fox out of the reckoning. Don't you believe it? He's got Fielding tickets for Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> oh, I didn't know about this. You don't know what's going on, Dad. It's no use sitting there behind a pile of work. Fielding always says that a clear desk is a sign of efficiency. Does he? Yeah, so if you want that job, you better get through there and ingratiate yourself. You mean creep? Well, I'm not going to creep. I'm going to get this job on merit. Oh, Henry! <laughs> yes, FG? I won't be in this afternoon. 
Fox has very kindly got me tickets for Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> Keep an eye on things for me, would you? Certainly, F.G. Yes, well, I can see you're not terribly busy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. It's raining. Oh, I suppose I'll just have to get wet, that's all. Mr. Fielding! See that? What? Fox. That's a second jar of homemade jam he's taken into field. Huh? Yes. <laughs> Something the matter, Henry? You've put in for the job, haven't you? Well, uh, yes. You said you wouldn't. Ah, I said I hadn't thought about it. And now you have. Henry, I don't suppose I'll even get an interview. And if I do, I'll only be making up numbers. No. I thought it would be good experience for me. And I have to show management I have ambition. Oh, you've got ambition. Pinocchio. <laughs> Pinocchio? Why do you call me that? You go to the same church as Fielding, don't you? What if I do? I go to church to pray, Henry. And what have you been praying for this week? Osborne's job? <laughs> Certainly not. Ted, you're a primitive Methodist. What are you doing in a Catholic church? <laughs> I like the service. <laughs> You turn Buddhist to get that job, wouldn't you? Henry, I have no intention of taking your job. I'm simply doing it for the experience. Don't you believe me? Your nose is getting longer. <laughs> really, Henry, I can't stand any more of these infuriating innuendos. Careful, Dad. Remember what it says in the vacancy, must be able to get on with staff. He's put in for the job. I told you. Well, I know something he doesn't know. Now, keep this to yourself. It's confidential. You're on the short list. <laughs> How did you know? I heard it in personnel. Well, I hope he won't be too disappointed. I shouldn't think so. He's on as well. What? And Fox. <laughs> well, perhaps they're only making up the numbers. Yeah. They'll probably go in during the afternoon. Why? Well, the same personnel that these things are usually decided in the morning. When are you going? Four o'clock. <laughs> Twenty minutes late already. Walker's having a very good interview. Is he? Mind you, not as good as Fox. Fox had a superb interview. Oh, I'm sure he did. I'm beginning to wonder whether it's worth going in. Obviously, I'm only making up the numbers. Don't be defeatist, Dad. I've got a lot riding on this. Have you? So you put money on me after all? No, my money's on Fox. <laughs> well, to be realistic, it's cut and dry. And they say blood's thicker than water. Well, if you don't think I'll get the job, what are you worried about? Well, I'm not worried about you getting the job. Just don't want you to lose the one you've got. <laughs> What are you talking about? Fielding's got complete confidence in me. It's not Fielding. You've got to worry about it. It's Doug Dale. He's tricky. Tricky? And vicious. So watch yourself when you get in there. And don't offer to shake hands until he does. But if he does shake hands, make sure he's a firm, dry handshake. If Doug Dale gets hold of something that feels like a piece of wet fish, you're finished. <laughs> are you all right? My mouth's gone dry. Here. Do this. Thanks. <laughs> what is it? Bubble gum. <laughs> I can't go in there chewing bubble gum. Don't worry, you've got plenty of time. They're laughing. That's a good sign. Not for me. Why do you keep walking about like that? Have you been to the toilet? Twice. Yeah, that's nerves. I know it's nerves. 
Is there anything else you think I should know? Yeah, when he speaks to you, look him straight in the eye. I'll respect you for it. Dogmore likes the candidate to be confident and assertive. I thought his name was Dugdale. It is. Well, you just said Dugmore. Oh, don't get his name wrong, Dad. He's very particular about that. <laughs> oh, and if he starts shouting at oh, you... Oh, he's not going to start <laughs> shouting, is he? He could do. He may want to see what you like under pressure. I think he's going to find out. If he does start shouting, try the old POW trick. What's that? Imagine him stark naked. Naked? Without a stitch on. <laughs> Make him look ridiculous in your eyes and you'll lose your fear of him. But don't overdo it. You may burst out laughing. <laughs> don't worry. I won't feel like laughing. Just don't let him talk down to you, Dad. Matthew, if I manage to do all this, do you think he'll give me the job? He might. Fielding won't. Forget all I've said when you're dealing with Fielding. Well, that's very useful, I must say. Anything else you think you should tell me? Yeah, get rid of that gum. It looks terrible. Ah, <laughs> oh, Henry. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Would you like to come through? Certainly, F.G. Close that door. Sorry. <clears throat> Sit down, would you, Henry? <laughs> We won't keep you. Sorry. We won't keep you a moment. <laughs> it's an important call from the chairman. Right. <laughs> Comfortable, Henry? Yes, thanks. Good. going to eat you. <laughs> Although I know that interviews can be pretty nerve-wracking. <laughs> they certainly can. Are you nervous? No, I'm not nervous. Well, Mr. Dugdale's got a trait to catch, Henry, so um, we'll have to keep this fairly short. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. Why do you want this job? Because I think I can do it. It's a challenge, and I always respond to a challenge. I also think it's the next logical step in my career. Had you rehearsed that? No. <laughs> well, it certainly will be a challenge. You saw what happened to Osborne. You'll be placed under a very great deal of pressure, Henry. Yes, I appreciate that, F.G. What are you like under pressure? I can take it. <laughs> are you comfortable in that chair, Henry? It just needs a minor adjustment, F.G. Oh. Henry, what qualities do you think are particularly important in this job? Oh, um, getting on with people. Yes. Achieving one's objectives with tact and diplomacy. Right, Henry. That's all very well, but sometimes one has to take a tough decision. One has to be unpopular. I can be unpopular. And disliked. I can be disliked. Yes, but it is important, isn't it, in dealing with staff that one uses... Tact and diplomacy. Yes, and treats them with courtesy and respect. <laughs> <laughs> we need someone who can lead by example. Someone who not only respects his staff, but is, is respected by them. Someone they can look up to. I do agree, F.G. I think you expressed that extremely well. 
Is there something wrong with that chair, Henry? Or are you getting shorter? <laughs> it's the pace, FG. That's the problem. So, yeah, excuse me. <laughs> Perhaps it would be better if you sat on another chair, Henry. Certainly, F.G. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> well, another question, Mr. Dugdale. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you think you can do this job, Willows? You sound confident, maybe overconfident. Might I suggest that confidence could be misplaced? We had the same assurances from Osborne, and what happened? Stretched out amongst the runner beans with the figures three months late. <laughs> I consider the department tardy and inefficient. And if things don't improve, heads will roll. <laughs> you find that amusing? No. But after all, we're only going through the motions, aren't we? This job is cut and dried, isn't it? Well, how did you know? Because I heard it from a very reliable source. And since Mr. Dugdale has a train to catch, why don't we stop the charade and just tell me who's got the job? Well, you have, Henry. Yes, well, if you think I'm going to work with... <laughs> well, we had to go through the interviews, but it always was really a foregone conclusion. After all, you've been doing all the work and, and doing it most satisfactorily. Oh. But we would prefer you didn't say anything until the others have been officially informed. There have been far too many rumours flying round this office. I don't know where they come from. <laughs> I think I do. Well, now you know something that they don't, Henry. Should we talk money? Certainly. Well, Henry? Well? How did it go? Chair collapsed. <laughs> no! Yeah. <laughs> oh, bad luck. One of those things. But, uh, what about the interview? The interview? Difficult to say. Just have to wait and see, I suppose. You've uh, no idea, then? Didn't say anything to me. I don't suppose they'll keep us waiting long. No. Congratulations, Dad. <laughs> 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 